Hi, it's me, and welcome to this overview and guide on how to use the Chapter 2 identities in Limbus Company. That's right, all of these IDs are based on characters who first appear in Chapter 2. That means they're all Season 1 IDs, meaning that you'll always be able to pull for them in the gacha, but depending on when you're playing, you may not be able to purchase them from the dispensary. Understand that since these IDs technically come from three different factions, they don't necessarily synergize with each other. The LCCB faction IDs focus on inflicting large amounts of debuffs, though not necessarily the same type of debuffs as each other, with paralysis being the only through line. The Ting Tang Gang ID deals very heavy damage with synergy relating to bleed effect, despite not having that much in the ways of bleed infliction. And the Los Mariachis ID focuses on tanking using their powerful evade skill. On top of that, these IDs struggle with fueling their own ego with one exception. They're going to suffer a good amount as a result, and finding uses for them is going to heavily depend on what ego you want to fuel on other characters. The four IDs we're looking at today are LCCB Assistant Manager Ishmael, LCCB Assistant Manager Rodian, Los Mariachis Jefe Sinclair, and Ting Tang Gang Gang Leader Hong Lu. Of these, Ishmael and Hong Lu are going to be the two that are most usable by a good margin, with Hong Lu being one of the strongest IDs available. Let's go over them in order of usefulness, starting with the LCCB. This is going to feel a bit disjointed, so strap in for the time being. LCCB Assistant Manager Rodia was designed to be a unit that becomes more powerful against enemies who like to spam their defense skills. The problem is that those skills aren't used often, and since counter skills go off of the character's offense, it doesn't really have a lot of use cases right now. This first becomes apparent with her passives, which might actually be the least important passives in the entire game. 10% damage against defending enemies will usually not even make up for the damage lost because of the defense skill. 20% damage on the support passive is better, but using Rogia as a support is much more effective with her base ID. Since most Envy teams also feel Wrath, your choice is usually going to be base Rogia in this case. This Rogia ID actually has the maximum offense level on all of her skills, with a speed of 3-7, to seven, her first skill actually inflicts same turn paralysis that might end up mattering if the attack goes through. Thrust is only usable because of its high offense level, and it might as well not have an effect on it. Defense power down is literally never useful, and the fact that it's same turn in this case means that this attack is activating the defense skill that you would want to weaken in the first place. Both Thrust and Bludgeon gain coin power when the next skill after them is also blunt while at up tie 4, but this still is probably not enough to make this skill worthwhile. Unfortunately, her most useful skill is Suppress, which is, uh, not great. Even after you factor in the plus 2 coin power from the effect, 7 to 15 isn't a great roll range for 2 coins. The most valuable part of this skill is the debuffs it inflicts, namely Defense Level Down and Paralysis. This ID would have been a lot better with a speed value of 5 to 8, because as it stands, there's a good chance that this ID just isn't going to be fast enough for all of its effects to be taken advantage of. Ishmael's ID sits in a weird place where it's too slow to do the things it really needs to do and doesn't clash well, but has a variety of really powerful tools that it can take advantage of. This is an ID that takes advantage of ammo, which means that it will be a lot less useful in really long fights. The first thing to note is that her defense skill allows her to gain aggro at up type 4, which is weird for an ID that doesn't have tank stats. It also gives more aggro if you're out of ammo, which... okay. I'm still not sure how useful aggro is, but I would say that this ID isn't the best to use it overall. Shove would be a much better skill if this ID were faster, as it essentially is exactly the same as Rhodia's skill 1. The difference this time is that it gains aggro at up type 4, and once again, I don't know how useful that is. The 8 plus tremor for 2 coin power at up tie 4 is actually really easy to reach, so keep that in mind as well. This is actually your best damaging skill provided you're out of ammo, which is important to note. Quake Rounds is the most powerful skill at inflicting tremor in the entire game. A combined total of 16 tremor and 4 tremor count is very high, and makes bringing this ID in tremor teams almost always a good idea. The issue is that she has no good ego in that setup but the rest of the build benefits very well from being able to supplement a Tremor team. Suppress is not great at clashing, but is an exceptional skill for dealing high amounts of damage. First off, it's this ID's skill that bursts Tremor, 
which matters in her tremor team, but take a look at how much Rupture and Fragile is inflicted by this skill. 8 Rupture with 2 count by the end of the attack is really rare Rupture support, but once again, this ID is a little too slow to take advantage of the massive 5 Fragile that this skill can inflict. On the rare occasion that this is your fastest team member for a turn, this skill allows you to nuke basically anything you want to. Her support passive is useless. Her actual passive is helpful in a Tremor setup, allowing her to inflict 3 more Tremor using Quick Rounds, but Clashing isn't really her strong suit, and the best Tremor IDs also don't usually have Gluttony skills, so that Resonance activation really holds this passive back. Rosemariachi's Hefe Sinclair is… interesting, I guess? It's a horrifically slow tanking ID that has the ability to inflict Sinking, which is a really rare and powerful effect at the time of recording. He's also the worst character at inflicting sinking due to his terrible speed and terrible clashing power. His first skill has the very bad roll range and automatically eats any sinking it inflicts due to the infliction being on the first coin. This skill and the next one actually gain coin power if the target has a certain amount of sinking, but since removing sinking from the enemy will deactivate the bonus and every hit removes sinking, it makes the skills a lot less valuable even then. Plus, the rolls don't increase enough to make a significant difference in most cases. So I've been talking about sinking a lot, so you'd be forgiving for believing that this was a sinking-focused ID. Well, I lied. This is actually a poise ID. A really bad one at that. Skill 2 doesn't give enough poise to matter, and his only way of generating poise until up time 4, which allows his evade skill to give one poise count on evade, which doesn't really matter. This skill can also inflict one sinking count, but it isn't on the last coin, so it may as well not be there at all, since the attack itself is going to consume it. Pinata Party is the only skill that this Sinclair has that doesn't have a max roll of 8 by default. On paper, the skill is actually very consistent, being able to lower your own stagger threshold and having up to a 45% crit chance without having any poise at all. But unfortunately, this skill just doesn't hit very hard. That's even after factoring in the 30% critical damage boost at Uptie 4. The thing this Sinclair is best at doing is evading enemy attacks, which his passive seems to be encouraging as well, allowing him to lower his stagger threshold on a successful evade. The problem is that since he has a speed of 2 to 3, he is almost never going to be able to redirect attacks, and rarely clashes even in non-focus fights. Alas, his most powerful effect is his support passive. And while 10% damage isn't that valuable, this passive is very easy to fuel and activate. It's probably Sinclair's most consistent support passive, especially since it functions off of Gloom, which you're likely to want to bring anyways. Unlike the last three who are very situational at best, Ting Tang Hong Lu is one of the best units to add to a team if you don't know who else to bring. His gimmick lies in recycling coins and having effects that increase damage dealt, which is a crazy pair of gimmicks to pair together. Firstly, his support passive is the same as base Rogia's, except that it functions off of Gluttony instead. As a result, it's a very strong passive with a very easy activation method, since Gluttony is one of the stronger team compositions to build. If he's in your party, he heals SP for free with a Gluttony resonance of only 2. Sanity recovery is really powerful regardless, but for an ID like this, it's just the cherry on top. Ting Tang actually has a lot of bleed synergy once he reaches up tie 4, but his only bleed infliction is found on his first skill. All things considered, this is a lot of bleed for a skill 1 to inflict, and it means he's a very easy inclusion for bleed setups as well. Shank might actually be the strongest skill 2 in the entire game. 3 to 18 range skill 2s are the best ones when it comes to clashing, and this one does additional damage each time it lands heads as well. Plus, if the final coin just barely doesn't kill the enemy with a heads flip, it will flip the coin again just for the hell of it. Against multi-part abnormalities who have parts that can be attacked while broken, this skill will always re-roll on heads due to the part HP being registered as zero, which makes him an excellent ID for killing bosses as well. The fact that the skill is Lust just makes it even stronger, being able to activate Whistling for N Faust for easier SP restoration for the rest of your party, while also being a very powerful skill for damage. Mutilate ties for the highest rolling non-ego skill with a max roll of 30, but deals less damage than Shank on average due to it only being one coin. The skill is incredibly strong for clashing in the Hard Mirror Dungeon, but you want to use it when you would score a kill. After killing an enemy with Mutilate, you'll instantly use it again on another enemy, and this reused skill deals double damage on landing heads, which is both funny and very effective. 
It's also worth mentioning Hong Lu's evade skill, since it rolls high enough to matter and becomes even stronger on Uptie 4. It's one of the only evade skills in the game that will grant you SP on winning a clash, and Hong Lu is at least fast enough to be able to make use of it sometimes if you'd want to. Ting Tang Hong Lu also fuels his own roseate desire ego. That being said, the ego itself doesn't do that much. All of its effects are current turn for an ID that isn't super fast, so you'd mainly want to use this to win a clash, except mutilate rolls higher. Its main saving grace is that it becomes AoE at uptie 4, allowing you to do a decent amount of additional pierce damage. There are no sin affinities that are provided by all four of these IDs, but three of them provide gluttony and three provide envy. When it comes to ego that need both, there really isn't much, with half of the ego that need both being released with the most recent update. Gluttony and Envy are both very strong sin affinities in general, but they are almost never needed together is all. The best ego that these IDs help fuel happen to be ego that are already strong without them. Red Eyes is a prime example of this, being able to be fueled with just Chef Ryoshu and Ting Tang Hong Lu together pretty easily, and providing really solid slash damage support as well as speed control in the form of Bind Infliction. Plus, this ego actually benefits a lot from becoming AoE at Uptie 4, which just helps teams built around it even more strongly. Even though Ting Tang Hong Lu feels his own roseate desire perfectly, you're probably better off using Soda in that slot instead. He still feels two of the resources needed, and Gloom isn't too difficult to generate. While Fluid Sack will always be better for keeping your team's SP and HP topped off, Soda is a really good alternative that fulfills the same niche. It also gives a nice SP boost to your entire party each time an enemy is killed. In terms of other ego that these units feel well, Hong Lu's Dimension Shredder is a pick that specifically becomes much better at uptie 4 thanks to being able to supply Fragile and an AoE attack. The ego itself isn't that powerful when it comes to dealing damage, but it's really helpful for debuff infliction and works well with LCCB Ishmael since she inflicts a lot of rupture to supplement this skill's rupture count infliction. Lastly, Ebony Stem is one of the better ego that is supported by the two better IDs from this showcase. Ishmael and Hong Lu together can fuel it as a pair, and the ego itself is one of the most powerful when it comes to dealing damage and mass inflicts gluttony fragility for gluttony heavy team setups. It's a little expensive to fuel, but the payoff is usually worth it. I ended up making a pierce heavy team that probably isn't as good as it should be, but does a very good job in clashes and receives good support from Ishmael because I couldn't figure out a good team that included two of these IDs. First off, I feel like I don't need to explain Enfaust passive anymore, but it's the most effective SP generation on this team and the main reason why there has to be as much less generation as there is. Since most of the attacks on the team are blunt and pierce, Gaze Infliction from her skill 2 helps your damage output by quite a bit. She also serves as a good Ego support that can use Fluid Sack for recovery and Hex Snail to increase your overall damage potential. The team in general does a really good job fueling both of these Ego. Sync Dawn is a very heavy Pierce damage dealer who does a great job at winning clashes, but she's mostly here for her Sin generation spread. Her Ego are all also pretty easy to use and roll pretty high despite being single target at Uptie 3. She's a great supplement to any of the IDs that are based on Chapter 2. Chef Ryoshu is yet another good character to include thanks to her healing ability and high damage potential. Her ego are all really easily fueled by this party, even if you want to use her soda instead of Forest for the flames. Her support is being able to inflict Bind also helps to activate the speed-based effects on Don Quixote for some extra damage and can slow enemies down enough for Ishmael to be able to redirect attacks. If you wanted to use a Tremor-focused team, consider pairing Ishmael with any of the Rose Spanner IDs, as well as Efflores Ego Yi Sang, since they all have very synergistic Sin Generation spreads and can support each other really well. Once Rupture teams gain enough support, you can also bring her alongside them to make Rupture Infliction more consistent. And that's about all I have to say about the Chapter 2 IDs. It was a bit unfocused, because these IDs aren't necessarily designed to be used together, since they're all from different factions, but I hope you found it useful nonetheless. Thank you all for watching. If you have any other strategies that you like involving these IDs, I'd love to hear them. I'd appreciate you leaving a like on the video if you found it helpful, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye bye